And I apologise for the sheep. It's such a good picture how to use it, but obviously that's, that wouldn't be a great milking sheep leaping like that. But <laughs> look, um, thank you for inviting me to present to you today, particularly Craig saying it would probably be useful to share a little bit about what's going on in, um, in Wellington. And so that you know that you are on our radar, there, you know, I know you're interested in hearing what, what government is doing to support this growing industry. So I'm going to just talk briefly about some of the ways central government is, is trying to help you. And overall, I really would urge you to just get in touch with us. Um, we, you don't want decisions being made from people in Wellington without your input. And you've got a great collaboration going on in this room and just keep that going. It would be great. So I'm from MPI, Ministry for Primary Industries, and so I'm going to briefly talk about what we're up to. So here you can see our, our strategy, our goal is to grow and protect New Zealand and for New Zealand to be the most trusted source of high value natural products in the world. So that's you lot, that is you lot. Um, and on the slide we talk about growing and protecting. So in MPI we talk about protecting in order to grow. I'm kind of from the grow side of things, so we're all about increasing their value of exports, because I'm in the primary growth partnership team. But I have loads of colleagues who are more on the protect side, and that ranges from protecting consumers by providing advice like you know, looking after your food properly, right through to protecting New Zealand from biological threats. So we've got a, we're doing a lot of stuff. I'm going to try and give you a little snapshot of it. So this is where I, my team is, the um, investment programs team. And this is our, one of our key forms of support for you. It's money, and we all like money. Um, so there's a, MPI has got loads of grants and investments available to deliver all these things. So you know that we're investing in a primary growth partnership with Spring Sheep, and um, they're presenting a lot of times at this conference to share that with you. The other probably most relevant source of funding at MPI is the Sustainable Farming Fund. Um, it might suit you if you've got a group of farmers or you, you know, farmers and researchers together who want to undertake some applied research to solve a problem or look at an opportunity and there's quite a few of those have been raised so I would really urge you to get together because um, when you apply for Sustainable Farming Fund money, the greater the impact of what you're proposing to do, the more likely you are to get funded. And you've got lots of common ground here. So, uh, you know, I really would urge you to do that. I've got these wee leaflets on the Sustainable Farming Fund, if you want a bit more information. And they're downstairs at the reception, um, the table when you sign in, when you come in. And just, you know, give us a, give us a call. There are people who are happy to talk you through how the process would work and, and what things are likely to work. Um, the criteria are really broad. You, you should deliver economic, environmental and social benefits. Um, the maximum investment MPI will make is $200,000 and the maximum time period is three years. So short, short and sharp, really. Um, the other main form of support from MPI is really behind the scenes, and it's market access. You won't know about market access unless you're exporting, but um, my market access colleagues work government to government to make sure you can get your products into various markets overseas. Um, so it's pretty fundamental. Um, now, a new initiative last year, recognising that MPI often see, is seen as helping just the big companies. So this new service is a helpline for exporters. It, it's officially known as the Exporter Regulatory Advice Service, or ERAS. They've got a helpline and an email address, and the idea is to support New Zealand exporters by making it easier for you to understand the requirements there are on you. Um, and what I would say to you is, if you call or email them, they track everything. And by taking your calls and questions, they will start to be able to see what the industry's pain points are, and they will they have a mandate to act on your pain points. So, I mean, that is a key part of their role. So I really would urge you to make use of them really early on if you're beginning to think about exporting. Um, the ministry looks at the data coming through to get a snapshot of what's happening, what people's issues are, and it will signal where MPI needs to do things differently. So I've talked about some of the grow things, and I've got to talk about the protect side, um, because you know we need the optimists and the pessimists. We need the people that see the opportunity and get excited, but we also need the people who see the, 
the possibilities of problems and want to and want to help you head those off at the pass. So um, the protect functions mostly relevant to you are biosecurity, food safety and animal welfare. So um, biosecurity, you know this is vitally important um, and it's way bigger than just MPI. It's MPI's international counterparts, uh, other parts of government, regional councils, industry, landowners, everybody. Um, and maintaining the balance between protecting New Zealand and allowing safe trade and travel is one of MPI's greatest challenges. So you know, it, it, is, it is difficult. Um, another area of regulation that's probably not particular, particularly um, popular is food safety. So MPI is responsible for legislation that covers all aspects of so food production, food processing, food transport and retailing. And obviously the aim is to protect the health and well-being of consumers here and overseas. Now, this is a horribly detailed slide. There's an interactive version of this on the website, so you can click on the bits that you're most interested in and get direct to that information. But there's also, when I was hunting around looking for information that might be useful on our website, which is quite difficult, um, there is a wee tool called Where Do I Fit? So if you're launching new products or you're starting production, you can, if you look up, Go on the website, look under food safety, there's this thing called where do I fit and it asks you a series of questions. So are you, are you just producing eggs? Will you go down one route? Are you um, slaughtering animals on the premises? There's a whole lot of questions that will narrow down what are the regulations that apply to you. So I hope that's a little bit of a help. Um, one of our food safety scientists is here in the audience. Where's Tanya? She's got a lovely maroon outfit on. Um, so I've got to remind you that strict requirements are required when dealing with raw milk or raw milk products um, with sheep carrying strains of pathogenic bacteria not seen in cows and occasionally they can get into raw milk. So if you've got any questions on this, um, Tanya, can, Tanya can help you. And like everybody I've spoken to within MPI, just urge you to get in touch as soon as you can. If you've got any questions, any comments, because people really do want to hear from you and really do want to help. So linked to this, the last, the third of the protect parts for MPI's animal welfare. We've heard a little bit about the importance of um, your social license to farm and the animal welfare issues that there are if you're wanting to get really high value products out there to your discerning customers. So this will all be known to you, the, um, the Animal Welfare Act and those five freedoms. Um, but there's also, there's a little bit more it all, it all sounded very complicated to me, I must say, but there are codes of welfare. So this is the sheep and beef cattle one. There isn't one for dairy sheep. So animal welfare colleagues really want to hear from you whether um, you would be happy to contribute to a specific sheep dairy one. Um, and there's some copies of these downstairs as well. Um, and in a third layer, there are a whole bunch of regulations that are being rolled out progressively. Um, there's these ones here towards the end of the year. Now, the idea of regulations, as I understand it, is you've got your um, the Animal Welfare Act, which is very high-level big things. If you, if you don't follow those, you're going to be in quite significant trouble. You've got the codes of welfare that are giving you some recommendations about how you could operate to stay within the app, but also um, how you could what best what best practice looks like so regulations are looking at specific situations specific circumstances and giving you um, really detailed guidance on how to do it and there will be penalties attached so these are the things that are coming in um, and I understand that various industry bodies are going to be helping get this information out to you so that again is just um, uh, another we thought really, do you, you know, to the extent, you, do you want to organise yourselves and, and liaise with MPI's One Voice or not? We'll, we'll see. Um, in terms of MPI trying to do more to make it easier for you to engage and get information, this is um, a wee app called Fit for Transport, which links into the, the work that's been done on animal welfare. And it just is, in theory, an easier tool for you to work out which animals are fit for transport. So all my animal welfare colleagues said, just tell people to give us a ring, email us, there's the contact details, and this is for if you've got any questions, if you want more information about your own operation, um, it's not just for dobbing in people. Now, I'm gonna, 
Um, it's not all about MPI, but so we've got the lovely Mackenzie in pink over there who's from MB, and th this is a slide for the scientists here. So this is the National Statement of Science Investment, and it's the 10-year strategic direction for New Zealand science system, and the aim is to maximise the contribution of science to economic growth and environment, health and social outcomes. There's a bit of a theme from government is all those things coming together. And here's another scary slide, which is, this is the funding available for science um, in government across, so it's just an indicator that there are a bunch of places to go to for money. Up the side there is how the money is allocated, so at the top is contestable, which means there's a pot of money and you and other people will be competing for that same pot of money. And along the bottom it's, is who's leading the research. So researchers here, you can have seen something that you want to explore. That's you right over in the corner. As an industry, there might be a number of you who think, hey, we've got these levels, these issues for the whole industry. That's another way to shape up um, some research. And then right over here is industry-led, which is, you know, you've, you, it's more down to a specific a specific company. So um, I hope this shows you there's a few options for money. Um, there are different pots of money are targeted to different people for different things. There doesn't seem to be at the moment a really easy way of helping you work out. So just with anything, pick up the phone or email and just have some conversations. So Mackenzie in pink can probably steer you a little bit to the MB funds, but she's been with MB less than a year. So Bear with her, um, and I can talk to you a little bit about MPI, um, MPI funds. Um, and oh, I forgot to mention a quite a big one: the billion-dollar provincial growth fund, which actually might be a particularly useful avenue for some of you. Um, I've got some basic info about that, which again is downstairs. So this is the new fund that was launched just a week or two ago, and it, the criteria are really broad. So I'm sure you could fit something in there. Um, it's looking for anything outside of the main centre, so not Christchurch, not Wellington, not Auckland, not Hamilton, anything that's going to uh, produce uh, more sustainable and vibrant regions. So a lot of you are working um, out of those main centres and could, I'm sure, find some ways of, of um, coming up with some ideas that are going to really help your, your communities. So that's another little avenue. So thank you. We would really like to hear from you on how central government can better support you. I had a great conversation with a lovely farmer earlier on who talked about regulations, meaning that local abattoirs are being closed down and the knock-on effect that's having and the desire to have great quality local food for overseas visitors and domestic visitors. But without the local infrastructure to enable that, then you know that just can't happen. So I think that, that's a really interesting conversation that we need to have yes the regulations are important but if the cost of them is driving businesses away from the regions which is exactly the opposite of what this government wants to achieve then that's something we need to do differently so look congratulations on coming here today and sharing with each other and challenging with each other and thank you very much for the opportunity to speak to you and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference